right, I'm off to the Euro European Space Agency Bepi Colombo Science Working Team meeting in Graz, Austria. I'm in a taxi on the way to Heathrow Airport. It's going to be a, a longest trip, two flights then a train and a taxi, or two flights and a longer taxi ride. I'll say more about it when we get there. I've arrived, it's uh, quarter past nine at night. I'm in a place called Schloss Sega, which is an Austrian castle. I've just been to my room and I'm going to try and find my way back now to beyond reception where apparently there is still some food for me to eat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Danke schön. <laughs> so I arrived late but there's still food to eat here and a glass of beer so I'm very happy. Danke schön. And here are some of my Japanese colleagues from the uh, yeah, okay. MMO mission. And breakfast. Here's everybody eating. Well, the meeting starts in about uh, 10 minutes and it's the usual rush to find somewhere where you can sit and uh, plug your laptop in with a cable that's long enough to reach the limited number of power supplies. Well, that was uh, quite a long day. We met from nine and finished at five, but then I stayed in the room for chats with people till 6.30. Um, we learned a lot about how the mission is developing and about uh, various constraints on how much data downlink is available at different times in the orbit, how much onboard data storage uh, is available. I chaired a session for the Mercury Service and Composition Working Group, of which I'm the current leader, and we agreed we'd have a meeting probably in Berlin in the spring to uh, work further on how that group will influence the policy uh, deciding priorities between different instruments operating at a different time. So it's been a, a productive day, if, if a long day. I'm now going to change my shirt, go for dinner, and then that will be followed by a wine tasting session in the cellar of this wonderful old castle where I'm staying so I'm looking forward to that as well. A wine tasting in a 300-year-old cellar. If this roof gave way, we'd lose the best part of the Epi Colombo mission because everybody is here. Say hello to the camera. Hello. So now we're going outside to finish our wine beside the fire. So you're you are not speaking by yourself. Well, it's day two, we're just about to start. We have several hours now of seminars on two of the main instruments on the spacecraft because it's important that all members of the science team understand how the other instruments work and how the data from those instruments can help their own instruments. So uh, let's get started. And then we can run for Jörn with um, going to many, much more detail. Um, we need to have a whole suite of instruments. We cannot just do with one instrument. And as we've all seen with the messenger data, it's very, very difficult, even with two instruments, if you really try to get an answer. 
Okay, this you have seen from Harry, so I'm just going to go through any iron. We have at this point, we, uh, this and mass data suggest an iron content in silica less than 6%. Neutron spectrometer suggests an abundance of, uh, of up to 18%, and then the mercury basal is lower than the moon. So to reconcile all this data, suggests a global contraction of about one two kilometers of the planet. But the most important thing of this feature, there are three characteristics important for this feature. Well, the meeting's over. There's the usual uh, kerfuffle about who ordered which taxi to get to the airport, but there's a, a big taxi here that's got room for six people, so everything's going to be fine and we will all catch our flights on time, won't we, honey? Yeah, yes, we'll do. Bye bye, Senko. just got home, it's 20 to midnight and it's been quite a trip. As you may have gathered, Bepi Colombo is a joint European-Japanese mission to Mercury. The equivalent science working team meeting next year is going to be in Japan, so that will be an even longer trip. So that's it from me, good night.